Before watching this video, try to solve this problem. A beam is subjected to a moment at the left side and a force acting at the middle of that. The value of the moment at the left side is 150 kN and we need to see how much would be the required force at the middle of beam to have zero deflection at that point. This is the question that I asked you to solve, and I remember most of you were able to answer that. But let me quickly review the concept. There is a beam which is subjected to a moment at the left side, and I know that because of that moment, this beam bends upward. I want to apply one force at the middle to make zero deflection at the middle of this beam. The question is, how much should be that force to make zero deflection at the middle of this beam? Okay. To solve this problem, we split our structure into two parts. The first one is the beam subjected to uh, a moment, and the other one is the beam subjected to that concentrated load at the middle. And we want to determine deflection for each of these two beams separately, and then make them equal to zero, sum of them equal to zero. Because the second deformation is a function of force, I can determine how much is that force, okay? So here is the procedure. Here's the quick solution of that. I split this structure, as we discussed, into two parts that is similar to just to what I just discussed about. I just put the force upward. That doesn't change anything here. In the first beam, this is the equation that we need to consider for our analysis. The length of the entire beam is 7 meter. The distance at which we want to determine the deformation is 3 point meter from the left side, which is x. And if I plug the values into this equation, that gives me the total deflection in the first beam equal to 0 0.002297 meter. Okay? In the second beam, it would be this equation, PL cubed over 48 EI. The force is now BY. That is unknown. That's what I'm looking for. So I will call that BY, plug the other parameters in that equation, and that simplifies into BY divided by 27,990. And here, because I want to have zero deformation at that point, I say delta 1 plus delta 2 is equal to zero because they are both going upward. And from that equation, I can see how much is the force. If I apply this equation, that gives me by equal to 27,990 times delta b1, which is 64.3. The negative sign says I need to reverse that because definitely if the moment going takes the beam upward, the force should be opposite to push it back. Okay, so this is what we discussed before. This beam actually is in the terminate beam. Why? Look at the first case. In the figure that I showed you, I removed that restraint. Can you see that? I removed that restraint and replaced that by one unknown force, which I call that BY. Okay? And I solved that BY using the fact that the deformation at that point should be equal to zero. This is what we call it the compatibility of deformation. And this is how we can determine that extra unknown in our calculation. That is the topic of our discussion today. The remaining unknowns in this problem, which are reaction forces at A, I have two reaction forces at A and one reaction force at C, can be determined using equilibrium equations. But if we have four unknowns, three equations that we have generally for two-dimensional problems are not sufficient to give me the entire unknowns. To get that extra unknown, I have to use the, the concept of compatibility of deformations. This concept is the one that we previously used for axially loaded elements. The same is true for torsional elements. We have two categories. In the left one, phi 1 is equal to phi 2. In the right one, phi 1 plus phi 2 is equal to 0 or is to hold a constant if there is any gap. So again, we are getting that extra equation from compatibility. The same is true for bending in beams.